the Property Coaching and Wealth Creation Podcast. Brought to you by Property and Business Coach, Daniel Latto. Join the conversation at www.daniellatto.co.uk. Remember to like and subscribe. Hi, and welcome to the Property Coaching and Wealth Creation Podcast. My name is Dan Latto. And in this podcast, uh, we've got a Facebook Live. So I did a Facebook Live in the last couple of days. And of course, not everybody can watch the Facebook Lives, but the information in those Facebook Live events are really important. So I wanted to share them and I wanted to get them down as a podcast. And so here is that Facebook Live. Speak soon. Hey guys, it's Dan again. So uh, we got cut off because my phone went out of power um, because I was on YouTube Live for a little bit this morning and didn't charge up my phone last night. Anyway, so just to finish this lot off, okay, before you start really investing in assets, do you know why we want you to get to this 70 grand mark? Is And I'll tell you, the reason is because when you get, like, if you've got 100 grand, let's say, and you buy a property, how many properties are you going to buy until your money runs out? Like, not that many, right? Well, then what do you do? Well, you can't do anything. So at that point, you've got to find a way of generating more cash. So let's look at it like this. Let's say it's 30 grand down per property. 30k, that's one. That's a 30 grand deposit on a 100 grand house. Uh, generates 200, 250 quid a month income. Let's call it 300 pounds a month, just for, let's say we've got a great deal, the cash flows really well. That's fine. And by the way, if these numbers are back to front on the screen, it's because it's a camera facing that way. I don't know why. Anyway, so then you've got another one, 30K, brilliant. That's another house. And another one, 30K, that's another house. 300 pounds a month, 300 pounds a month. So you've got 900 pounds a month coming in. Brilliant. That's you done. That's it. That's as far as you're going to get. Now you have to wait for the prices on these properties to go up. Well, how long are you going to have to wait for that? Especially if prices are going down. It's, it's too big a risk. The way that we want to do it is we don't want to just spend all our money and that's it. We've got no other way of doing it. Even if it's a really good cash flowing property, you're still only going to have so much, right? What we actually want to do, we want to split this. Um, and I know Kevin Green, for example, he calls it his 3 two, one uh, But... Kevin's got it slightly wrong for me. So his three, two, one is basically, he buys three properties, he, um, he keeps two and then he sells one, but the numbers don't work. Anyway, so uh, what you want to do is you want to buy a house and you want to put your deposit in. So let's say 30 grand, 30K, and you want to do that house up, okay? And then what you want to do is you want to generate some profit from that house, let's say 20,000 pounds. 20k because we know that that's doable okay you've got 70 grand in total 70k okay you get that 30 grand back out you've now got another 20 and that 70 now becomes 90 grand okay you do it again you buy your next house 30k like for me this is this is really obvious for me okay but it's not really obvious for other people obviously but i've been doing it for 20 years so next so that money goes in buys another house you end up with another 20k brilliant that's profit as well Brilliant. So now you're 40k up in profit. You put that 40k into another house. 40k. That's all profit, okay? This house now becomes 40k, uh, 300 pounds a month. This is your buy to let. This one right here is your buy to let property. You're recycling your cash. This is why we want to get you to this point. Even if you can't get to that point and you're putting 30k in, but bear in mind you're buying a house, you're doing it up and then you're selling it. 30k for a deposit. How much is the refurb going to cost between 10 and 20,000 pounds? So you're going to need 50 to 70,000 pounds just to get started on those. And 50 grand isn't enough. What if you do this and it doesn't quite work? Like it will eventually, but what if, you know, property can be really forgiving, but you want to, you want to protect yourself as much as you can. I mean, I'm not saying you need necessarily exactly 70,000 pounds, but you've got to understand this concept of putting some money into some property, refurbing it, putting it on the market, selling it, using that profit to go into your next one, making that on the market, refurbing it, selling it. You've got another 20 grand, and I apologise if there's any noise in the background, people are working <laughs> on the d -d 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 machines. So this is how you do it. You're recycling this cash, and you're making more money, and you end up with 40 grand, that goes into a new property, you're refurbing, your profit goes out, or actually it stays in that buy-to-let property. Does that make sense? Uh, just give me some comments, by the way, if that makes sense. I can see Tony's watching, and I know another person's watching, but I don't know who it is. This is why we recycle this money, because you're going to run out of money if not. 
Everybody does it. You can have a million pounds, right? You're going to run out of money. You have 10 million quid, you're going to run out of money. Ultimately, you're going to run out of money unless you can find a way to, to do this. But I just want to cover something here. Because um, I know most people have read this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. But I need you to understand how this works. From a, a, Let me just use a different colour, see if we can get a better colour. Uh, one that actually works. No, that doesn't work either. I need some new pens. Hey, Naomi. Um, okay, so... Um, Right here. Okay. Cash flow quadrant. Have you guys seen this? So you've got an employee, you've got a, a specialist, you've got a, a business owner, and you've got an investor. Okay. Most people in there, most people are employees, right? That's how most people are. Those people who are exchanging time for money, you're in a specialist area. Okay. You specialize in a thing that you do. I'm in this area too, by the way, because when I provide coaching services, I'm providing my time in exchange for money. If I stop providing coaching, that income stops. This is uh, S the specialist, okay? So most people are here, eventually they get to there and they become a plumber, let's say, and they spend all the time plumbing. Um, just, that's all they do, right? They're working 60 hours a week. They never quite get here. They never get to the business section because all they're doing is being a specialist and when they stop plumbing, their income stops, right? Now, you can move your business to this bit. So for example, uh, we run Sunday night um, coaching, Sunday night trainings, and um, uh, when we run those Sunday night trainings, like to some extent, I'm only working an hour a week, okay, and we met, you know, we, we've got some people in that group, so however many of those are times what we charge, it's 147 quid, and so, like, we're, like we're, we're still exchanging time for money, but at least it's more like a business, but really this one is about you investing in somebody else's business, like, you know, where your business works for you and it's fully systemized and you don't have to go into it and you don't have to do anything and it's, you, you're like twice or three times disassociated from it. Let me show you what I mean by twice or three times disassociated. Because this is where you want to be heading to in your business. You have um, a manager here. Okay, uh, give him some arms. So you've got a manager, you've got you, let's say your male. Uh, you've got your manager, okay, and they run the business for you, okay, and then, ultimately, they have departments with people in, oops, so when there's a problem in one of these departments, don't know if you can see that well, when there's a problem in one of these departments here, like, this person gets to find out, not you, uh, let's, let's use um, property, because the lettings agency that we have, this is a great example, there's a problem with one of our properties. This is when we used to own the lettings agency. We sold it in 2011. Uh, made some good money on it. And there's a good reason to sell it. There's some emotional stuff tied into that business, which we wanted to get rid of. And if you know some of the history... Hi, Tina. If you know some of the history with kids going missing and so on, you'll understand why that is. So, what happens is, we have a problem with a tenant, okay? The manager has to deal with that problem. I don't care. I don't give a shit. Right? I just don't care, even if it's in my property. Because this person here will sort it out. I never even get to find out, Right? Because most problems are small problems. You know, let's say the washing machine stopped working and the boiler stopped working and they stopped paying rent. Like, I, will, I probably won't find that out for another couple of days. This person resolves it and actually I never get to find out. Everything's back up and running. That's because I'm, I'm disassociated. I'm completely separate from, from that. Right? I, I, these pens are terrible. Let's go back to black. Okay. I'm completely disassociated from this business. That's where you want to be in your business. And it takes time to get there. So how do you get there? How do you make your business like this? Well, first of all, it takes money. Like anything in this world that's worth doing, it takes money, right? So how do we get make money? Well, we make money by closing business. So let's talk about the marketing stuff, because this is really what's important. This is the bit that people are getting wrong. Uh, I saw someone doing um, some social media training, and they are very good at what they do, by the way, um, on social media. But I know that their social media training, it'll be, you know, they'll be talking about Twitter and then we'll talk about LinkedIn and best practices for each one. And literally, we're just talking about how to post on Twitter. How to post on Twitter is rubbish. Like, who cares? Like, you just type something and you click send and it goes out. Yeah, there's, there's rules about images and that kind of thing. But people get really like, uh, oh, we've got a Twitter account. Like, no one gives a shit. Oh, I've got a Facebook account. No one cares. We've got three people watching in this group. Nobody really cares about what you do, right? Not as a one-off. 
This is what's really important. Nobody cares about what you do. Pretend that that's true for a second. The only time that people care is when you've got enough stuff going out. Because then you must be like a proper like business person, right? You must be professional if you've got enough stuff going out. Why do you think we do so many uh, podcasts and videos? Because no one cares. Literally nobody cares. The only time that people care is they go, wow, Dan's on iTunes. Wow, that's really cool. At that point, they care. Uh, can you hear lots of noise in the background, by the way? We've just got lots of um, building work going on. It's in Spain today. My feet are cold and it's raining uh, a little bit. And it's not, you know, it does be raining in Spain. It's not good. Anyway, let's talk to you about what you should be doing in your marketing, right? Content is absolutely key. Paramount. You look at the amount of content we've got going out on YouTube and the amount of content we've got going out on podcasts, it's significant, okay? And the reason why it's significant is that nobody cares. No one's listening to your stuff. Nobody, you do a video and you think that, thank you Naomi, you think that in doing this video life is going to change, you spend a thousand pounds doing uh, an amazing video and you put it out there and you wait and then it's like crickets. That's not crickets, that's a crabs. Crickets, nothing, nothing. It's because you've done one video, you need to do a hundred videos and you've only done enough content. Um, yeah, I'll stop complaining about the rain in Spain, thanks Tina. Uh, well, you know, there's a reason why we live here, and it's not for the rain, why we live in uh, Manchester. So, <laughs> so, like, I'm sure everyone's on those little da -da 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 things, just to, you know, I go live, and then we go on these things. All right, now let's talk to you about marketing, then. This is what you need to be doing. Okay, number one, number one, YouTube. This is how I'm doing it right now. I will go live on YouTube. I went live on YouTube this morning. I might get zero people watching, right? I don't care. It's not relevant. Right? I've got a live on YouTube. I've now got a YouTube video. Okay, so step one. Um, so let's call this content. Step one. That gets embedded on my website. Uh, okay, website. So I take the code. There is literally like four or five machines all going at the same time. Uh, which is just, just typical. So. We embed the YouTube code onto the website. At that point, this is number one, at that point, number two, that then gets spewed out bleh, to uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. It just automatically, we've got a um, bit of software on our WordPress website called blog2social.com. You can use Hootsuite, you can use Buffer. But when we create a brand new post on our website, it goes out to these different places. It gets spewed out. So that's step one right there. Number one, it goes on the website. Number two, it gets spewed out. The next thing that we then do is we extract the MP3 from that YouTube. I don't do this. My little minion who lives in Bulgaria, who's like 19, uh, we're paying $3 an hour. Okay. Uh, it's Bulgaria. So they need a lot of money. And he's like 19, it's extra cash. So he takes the YouTube video, pulls out the MP3. That then gets turned into a podcast. The sound in the background is just hilarious. We've got the people doing the drilling, another person doing drilling in a wall, and then someone's cutting like a hedge just there. Anyway, I want to finish this. We take the MP3 and put it into a podcast. Guess what happens to the podcast? The podcast then goes into a website. Once the podcast is in the website, guess what? It goes out to uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, anything and everything that we can send it out to. That's how it goes. Uh, don't worry, Dan, you are loud enough. Yeah, it's funny that. I probably don't even need the mic. I think the mic helps. This should be your content. And when you're saying, oh, uh, my marketing's not working because... I have to do this across, you know, on Facebook, and I have to do something else on LinkedIn and something else on Twitter. You need to be automating it into Hootsuite or Buffer. And you know, also, like, you could use Facebook Live instead of YouTube, and you can embed that on your website, and you can pull out the MP3, and that gets turned into a podcast. Now, the bits that we've got automated here, we've got this bit automated right there. The YouTube video, this isn't automated just yet. We're going to find someone to start doing our WordPress stuff. Um, the other thing that we do is that we might create another video. Uh, let's do it here. So we might create another video. 
Now you may have seen just on YouTube we've done some stuff in Cyprus recently and we did some videos. The YouTube video that went out to my guy in Bulgaria. I filmed it, I sent it over to him, he's topped and tailed it, put some music on it, looks really cool. I'll put the link in down below so you can see it. It's got some drone footage flying through Cyprus, which is not stuff that I took. It looks awesome, right? We take that video and we put it on our website, it gets spewed out. We take that video, we get the MP3. That's automatic, we get him to do that, and then we send that out to our website. So what you should be doing is, you should be creating the content once, right? Create the content once, and you're repurposing this content, and then you're shoving it out. So like, you know, we're not perfect at it, we're continually improving what we do, and because I'm, you know, I enjoy doing editing of videos, but I realise that the more editing of videos that I actually do, the less time I've got to do other funky stuff, like this for example. Or like, sitting around thinking what new products we're going to create, or what uh, lead magnets we're going to create. So this is where your marketing should be automated. Have you guys got any questions about this? Because it's really important that you understand how you should be repurposing content. And like, I just don't watch people doing videos. Like, they're not doing anywhere near enough videos. I can just see the guys over there, so we're going to call it in a minute. But you're not creating enough videos, and when you're creating videos, you're then not creating the MP3s off those videos and having a podcast. We've got 149 podcast episodes, right? We're getting tens and tens of thousands of uh, podcast downloads. We've got over a quarter of a million YouTube views, which is amazing. They're all um, not generic, what's the word? Um, organic. They're all organic. We've got a couple that have been paid for, but that's about it because we're testing some adverts. But you've got to be shoving out such a serious amount of content that you get fed up with it. But if you feel like everyone's going to be fed up with your content, and people are not fed up with it because most people don't get to see it because we live in this world where literally on Facebook it goes like this. That's the news feed and Twitter and LinkedIn. Anything you did yesterday is completely forgotten about. No one knows about it. It is literally yesterday's fish and, or tomorrow's, I should say, fish and chip paper. Because yesterday's news has gone. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, I am committed to changing my videos and putting more content out. Yeah, absolutely. Now, couple of, one little secret, right? Big, big secret. On YouTube, the reason why we go to YouTube, let me just try this. Uh, I've got my laptop down here, by the way, so let me just try something. B &B deal. Okay, let's just have a look. So we put out some videos and we were testing, um, yeah, we were testing this uh, strategy. Let me just see, just recorded a recent workshop using that as an independent product along with a workbook. Yay, that's awesome. So now you see, let's just talk about that and I'll talk about the thing I was about to talk about. If this is your product right here, okay, Cricket. Nobody knows this exists, so how are you going to get that information out? Let's just see what Tina's saying. Just record, oh no, that was you, Tina. So how are you going to get that information out, okay? Well, there's only, there's only three ways, right? You've got video, you've got audio, and you've got, like, um, typed stuff, like articles, okay? Uh, let's call it words, because the, the written word is what I'm referring to. Okay, so you should be creating content on all three mediums because I don't watch videos and, and I try not to read, I listen. I listen to audiobooks, I listen to podcasts, I listen to Gary Vee and, Gary, uh, Gary and Grant Cardone all the time. Now, where are those, where are you going to get those out to? Well, it's social media, isn't it? Maybe your mailing list, okay. Where else? That's it. That's all you've got. You've got social media and your mailing list. That is literally all you've got. Now think about it for me, I live in Spain. We're building it using just social media and video and audio. We can't go to networking events. And networking events are so clumsy. You've got to go to a networking event, and then it's one person, and you've got to speak to another, and then you've got to speak to another. You make a podcast of speaking to 200 people straight away. Much, much better. So this would be like Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest, uh, what's the other one? Um, Insta. And that's how it works. So you're creating video that goes out on social media about your product. You're creating audio about your product that goes out on social media. You're creating word, written articles that goes out to your product. This is what you've got to be doing. Otherwise, and, and, and by the way, to streamline this is that easy because you take your video, you take your MP3, and then you send your MP3 to someone who's going to type it up, and then you create your article. 
if that costs money and I don't like spending money because my time, no, no, but that is what we do apart from doing the uh, article stuff. It all goes out on social media, goes into the uh, email stuff, and then we talk about our products. We do Facebook Live, we do YouTube Live, that's how that works. Does that make sense, Tina? Hope it does. Just something else I wanted to discuss, and that is keyword optimization using YouTube. What we did was we ran a test last week. Uh, just go type BMV Deal Croydon. BMV Deal Croydon. And on the first page on my, I come up with my video. And it's my YouTube live video. So this is what's key. This is why we do it. So you, you need to understand what your keywords are. Keywords. Okay. And they need to go on YouTube. And you go live on YouTube. So it's live. So if you've got a um, keyword for team, it will be property sourcing compliance. Let's call it PSC, because I can't be bothered writing all that down. Property sourcing compliance. Go YouTube live, and then like 10 minutes later, go to YouTube and go type property sourcing compliance, okay? You'll be up at the top on YouTube. Like, don't tell anybody who's not in this group. That's like our secret source, right? Don't tell anyone, don't share it with other people. You've been on here for long enough, uh, other people might not last that long. Uh, let's have a look. Can I put the workshop recording down into bite sized bits on specific subject talked about and use as you do? Uh, YouTube, website, and social. Absolutely. And that's exactly what I do. And in fact, we're not even that good at it. So, like, we should take this video and edit little bits out of this video, and they should be like little sound bites that we can upload to Instagram. Less than 59 seconds. They'll go on YouTube, or they go on uh, Facebook and LinkedIn, just like 59 second segments. And the reason why they're 59 seconds is because Instagram is like a minute long, that's as long as you can do it. But that's exactly what you could do. So, you get your keywords, you go on YouTube Live, and then you check on Google, and then you're number one. How cool is that? Then you pull out the audio MP3, and then you upload it to SoundCloud or a podcast. There you go. That's your marketing. That's automated because you can get other people doing it. And what you should be doing is you should be creating content, content, content. You should be thinking, what's the lead magnet that I can create that will get people to opt into our mailing list so we can mail the shit out of them, right? That's what you should be doing. Like, in a polite manner, not mailing the shit out of them, but giving them really good value, really good content. Right, that will do for me, I think. Thank you for joining. If you've got any questions, put them in down below and we'll continue the conversation, obviously. And if you've got anything you want me to go through, we're going to start doing more and more Facebook Lives in here because it's really a lot of fun. Enjoy the whiteboard. We're going to stop it with the, um, with the guys uh, over there. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure how to... Oh, yeah, that's where we finish it. Okay. Yeah, my pleasure, guys. I will speak to you soon. Take care. The Property Coaching and Wealth Creation Podcast. Brought to you by property and business coach, Daniel Latto. Join the conversation at www.daniellatto.co.uk. Remember to like and subscribe.